Welcome to this video. This series of videos explains how we can do inverse finite element modeling in simulation of tube hydroforming. In this problem, we know the desired diameter of final tube and we want to find appropriate pressure which should be applied to the initial tube. This problem will be solved by Python scripting in Abacus software and we will explain it by details in this series. In the first video, we explain how we could model tube hydroforming in Abacus software. In our next videos, we explain how to use Python to do inverse finite element modeling. Let's start to model tube hydroforming in this video. At first, we create the tube. The part is axisymmetric, deformable, and we will draw it by shell feature. And we draw a rectangle around the symmetric axis. The diameter of the tube is 10 millimeters. The length is 30 millimeters. And the thickness is 0 0.25 millimeters. This is our part related to tube and then we draw two dies. The upper die is also axisymmetric and analytical rigid. We draw it by two lines with a fillet of two millimeters and we also should modify the length of the die. This side is 15 millimeters and the other side is 10 millimeters. We add a reference point to the rigid parts. Also we draw another die similar to the first one. Because in axisymmetric modeling, we cannot rotate part in assembly, we should draw each die separately. Both of dies are similar, with similar dimensions. The hole in the die is 10 mm and dimensions are 15 and 10 mm. We also add a reference point to this die. For the first die, we forgot to tune the diameter. We can edit parts by this option and edit the dimension here. And the hole in the die is 10 millimeters. We can go to the property module. In property module, we only should define property for the tube which is a steel, at first mechanical and elastic behavior which is isotropic linear and we enter the Young modulus in megapascal because dimensions are in millimeters. I also copy material property of a steel for plastic the formation of the steel and because we will use dynamic explicit we should enter density in ton divided by cubic millimeters we also create a section and assign the section to the tube and import all parts to the assembly machine By auto offset, we have distance between parts. Now I translate dice to be in the right place from this point to this point at first. And then I know that the die should be 5 mm outside the tube. 
I translate the die from point 0 and 0 to point 0 and 5. Similarly, we translate the bottom die from this point to the end of the tube and then we move it 5 mm downward from point 0 to point 0 and minus 5. This is our assembly. Now we can go to the step module and we create a dynamic explicit step to solve this problem. We enter a small time period to accelerate our simulation. In interaction module, at first we define interaction property between tube and dice. We define tangential behavior by penalty method and the friction coefficient is 0.1. We define a contact between die and tube. At first we should choose the die for master surface and then choose the tube as a slave surface. We choose kinematic contact and also finite sliding and define contact property. One more time, we choose another die and the yellow side and surface of the tube and kinematic contact, finite sliding and interaction property. In load module, we should fix both of dies. We fix them in all of degrees of freedom. We also fix two sides of the tube. The upper side. And one more time for the lower side. For creating boundary condition for tube, rotational degrees of freedom are not important because in solid elements there is no degrees of freedom related to rotation. Now we apply pressure to the inside surface of the tube. I create low pressure type and the inner side and we enter the magnitude of the pressure in megapascal also we create an amplitude which is tabular from point zero to the end of the step this amplitude will be multiplied by the pressure magnitude this is our load and now we should mesh the tube. At first we apply mesh control. We choose quadrilateral structured mesh and then by seeding the edge we want to have two elements align the thickness of the tube. However it's better to have more than two elements but here we only use two elements and now we apply a global mesh size close to the thickness of the tube and apply an event type control to the tube. The element type is explicit asymmetric stress and linear elements are preferred in contact modeling. Now we can mesh the tube and create the job and run the problem. We can monitor the progress of our job here and we can see the results now. 
Here is the inflation of the tube between two dies and we want to have a desired inflated diameter for the tube. I can sweep elements to show you the total shape of the tube. By sweeping elements around the axisymmetric line, we can have one half of the total tube and you can see the inflation of it. We can plot displacement of the tube by plotting U instead of stress and also in direction 1 and also by prop value we can see the displacement of the middle point of the tube which is the maximum displacement of the tube. We want to reach to the desired displacement at this node by tuning the pressure which is applied to the tube. Please see our next videos to find out how we could use Python scripting in Abacus environment to find this pressure. In fact, we are doing an inverse finite element modeling. Thank you guys for watching this video. If this video has helped you out, please let us know by a like, a comment or a subscribe. See you in next videos.